And welcome back to the Turdferg Show. Hey, today's video is kind of an updated version for Circle World of the classic problem you've done. And by classic, I mean this guy. I'm talking about two weights over a pulley. It looked like this, five maybe in two, which that problem's awesome. That would be 30 over seven, the end. That problem I can do in just a second. Uh, Here's the difference. This problem you always did, the pulley was always massless. It was always massless and frictionless. So now we're looking at a problem. What happens when the pulley actually does have mass? Amazing. In real life, things do have mass. Anyway, here you go. You know we're in circle world. But let's ignore circle world for right now. Let's just look at this. And if you know anything, you should know how to draw a diagram for this and what the forces would look like on this object. Well, if we were to draw a diagram, we'd dash, 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 a little free body here. AP exams, love those free bodies. We would have a tension going up and a MG going down. Hey, this is easy. I still remember how to write this. This would be T minus MG equals, and this thing is falling down so is equal to negative ma hey believe it or not half the physics in this problem is already over now if you remember something normally i usually wrote like m1a and m1g in these problems but here you actually see i didn't well it's a common convention in these usually somebody working these they call that m and they call this like Big M, just because it's the pulley. And I'm going to go with the same convention. You could call it M1 and M2 would be fine. I'm just not on this one. So anyway, let's get into this problem a little bit. What we've done for this, now let's take a look at this guy up here. What would be the equation for this? Well, this is an example. No, I don't want to change my color. This is an example of where you've got a force being applied to will. Well, I've been drilling it into your head lately. Everything we've been doing is look like this, FR equals I alpha. Hey, believe it or not, the physics is actually over for this problem. This is the equation for the pulley, FR equals I alpha. This is the equation for the weight. All we got to do now is put this together, find A is what we'll be looking for. I'm going to make one change. Instead of F, I'm going to use a T since that's what we've got in this problem. So TR equals... Now I'm going to do something else. This problem, most books will say, is a solid disk, which means instead of mr square, I is actually going to be one half mr square alpha. And we'll leave it at that for now. Here's the thing: I need to get these two again. The physics is already over. T minus mg equals negative ma, and fr equals i alpha. We're done with the problem. All we've got to do is combine these together. Well, that's going to be easy. All I've got to do is solve this equation for T over here. So T would be what? Mg minus Ma. You should be able to erase me for that. So I will now, let's plug that back in over here on this other side. Well, let's see. That would be Mg minus Ma times R is equal to one half m r square alpha. Now, here's the problem. This problem is going to ask you to find acceleration. Well, alpha is acceleration, but that's circle world acceleration. I want to find plain old fashioned acceleration, the A that we see over here, which means I need to get what I'm hitting around that I'm trying to get you to do is this. I need you to get A in for there. Do we have an equation? Do we have an equation that has A and alpha in it? Well, yeah, it's A equals R alpha, which means for me, alpha is, and all I'm doing here is a little substitution, A is, or alpha is, A over R. Now, I want you to look at something that happens in this problem. R cancels square. But now look, you've got an R and an R, so R cancels R, and we're left with, let's look at the left side, Mg minus Ma 
equals one half. And I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna go back and make this a big M over here. Cause this M was my big mass up at the top. So big M A, the big M A. Yeah, you know, all I'm looking for is A. So let's plug in some numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna get my MAs on one side together. So this is M G would be equal to what's on the other side? One half M A mine or plus little M A. Factor out your A, and then I'm gonna plug in numbers after that. One half M plus little M. Plug in your A. Let's plug in numbers into this. And so we've got five, the little m times g equals one half of three plus five. All times A. Well, uh, let's see here. No, no, no. Hey, give me some little space. I don't know why I've got that eraser showing up. Half of three is one and a half plus six is six point five. So that's six and a half a equal to five times g is actually forty nine. Actually, know that one. And so now that I will go to my calculator, forty nine divided by six point five, seven point five. And we are done with finding that problem. So that's all there was. Now, chances are this problem will probably also want you to find T, which wouldn't be hard. All we do is plug it right back into there, and we would have T. So this problem's over. So let's take one second and review through this one time and make sure you got it. So the equation for the falling mass, T minus MG is equal to negative MA. Why negative MA? Because it's falling. The other equation is going to be a complete blacked out screen. The other equation, TR equals I alpha. Then TR is equal to I would be one half. I'm going to write big M R square alpha. And remind me again, why did I use the big M? Because I want to make sure somebody knows this mass and this mass are two different things. This is the pulley. That's the object that's falling. TR equals one half M R square. In place of alpha, I write A over R square cancels R, R cancels R. Heck, I just look, we could have actually solved this for T and plugged in here. I didn't even notice that. Look, even faster. Put this in right there. T is one, look at what's left one half M A. So you could have just went one half. M A minus M G equals negative M A. And you'd still end up with the exact same formula we had before. Now, that's one problem I want you to do. Now I want you to look at this. What would you do? Oh, what would you do if somebody gave you the same old problem you've done 100 times? 10. Pulley. Mm, let's make this three. But let's do something. Let's make this pulley up here. Let's say that the pulley has a mass of two kilograms. How in the world would you do this one? If you can do this one, of you, I am well pleased. Easy. Let's do it fast. What's the equation for this one on the left? T minus, I'm going to call it M1G, equals negative M1A. Why? Because it's falling. What's the equation for that guy? T minus M2G equals negative, or excuse me, positive M2A. Why is this one equal to positive M2A? Because it's the one that's going up. Hey, we're almost there, except now for one thing you've never done before. T1. T2. These are two different tensions in the problems. These are two different tensions. 
the tension on this side is not the same as the tension on this side because of this mass that is in the problem. This was actually the tiebreaker University of Alabama gave in its physics contest a few years ago. What's the equation for the pulley? Well, you're probably thinking FR equals I alpha, and you're basically right. Well, according to what we just did, I did TR equals I alpha. Oh, no, what do we do with this? You got two T's, one on each side. Easy. T1R, what's going to happen? T1R minus T2R equals I alpha. The physics is over. Now, this one looks scarier, but it's not. All we're going to do, we're going to plug T1 in. We're going to plug T2 in. Heck, let's just work it on out. You need to see this. So here's your big equation. Minus T2R equals I alpha. Finish this thing. Well, I'm going to do something right off the bat. T1R minus T2R equals one half. I'm just going to use a big letter M. R squared and in place of alpha, A over R again. And now look at what happens. R cancels square. R cancels R's. This thing's already simplified. So look at what's left of this big scary equation. T1 minus T2 equals one half big M A. And all I'm going to do is plug in these equations for T1. T1 would be M1G minus M1A. So M1G minus M1A. What's T2? T2 is M2A. What is it? M2A plus M2G. But notice something. When we plug in T2, it's negative T2. So you got to distribute that negative sign. So this is going to be minus M2A minus M2G equals one half MA. Yeah, we're in the home stretch. Everything with an A on one side, everything without an A on the other side. So we've got M1G minus M2G. Hey, look, it's the difference equals on the other side m1a plus m2a plus one half m a holy cow m1g and we could plug in our numbers now i'm just getting crazy equals m1 plus m2 plus one half m bam and for the thing, for those of you that remember to do the difference times G divided by the total, it's still the same. The only thing that's changed this whole problem is the total it has a one-half M added into it now. I'm not going to work this one out because you should be able to. By this point, it's chapter 8 in physics. Plug in your 10, plug in your 3, and you should get an answer should get a positive answer. If we don't get a positive answer, then we got issues in this one. Anyway, I love you all. Peace out. Do the very last problem in your homework at this time. It's not near as hard. It's just going to be one that looks like that. So anyway, later, dudes. Bye.